Hey everybody, I am John Barker, and in this video we're going to take a look at a couple of new devices from Blackmagic Design. We have the Ultra Studio Monitor 3G and the Ultra Studio Recorder 3G. These are the Thunderbolt 3 versions of their older mini recorder and mini monitor devices. In the interest of full disclosure, Blackmagic has sent over the devices to take a look at, review, and then send back when the videos are done. But they're not watching this video before it's posted or anything like that. So with that out of the way, let's take a look at both of the devices. First up, the Ultra Studio Monitor 3G. Now this one connects over Thunderbolt to your computer, and then you can connect a HDMI monitor or an SDI monitor to it. That's for watching back footage on Final Cut or using it as an external device with vMix. Alternatively, we have the Ultra Studio Recorder. Now this is kind of the opposite, where you want to bring a device into your computer. So you connect the device via HDMI or SDI, and then you send that into your computer via Thunderbolt 3. Just a quick note on Thunderbolt 3 versus USB-C. This is a Thunderbolt 3 cable. You might not notice because it doesn't say that on it, and it has the same connection as a USB-C cable, but it's definitely Thunderbolt 3, and these devices are Thunderbolt 3. You wanna make sure that your computer has Thunderbolt 3, not just USB-C, that will not work in this case. These devices are specifically for Thunderbolt 3. So make sure that your laptop, PC, uh, just has Thunderbolt 3, or else there's no point in even buying these devices. So who are these devices for? Well, first of all, the Ultra Studio Recorder. This is when you wanna step up your game, maybe uh, bring in a better camera than a webcam. Uh, if you have a HDMI camera lying around, like I have a GH5 and a Canon G7, and I wanna bring those into software like uh, Oh, things like vMix, or Wirecast, OBS, or maybe I want to bring it into Zoom or something like that, then this is the device I want to use instead of going the USB route. Alternatively, uh, who is the uh, monitor for? Well, they're mainly pitched at uh, editors and things like that where you can connect to Final Cut or Resolve and then you can uh, watch back your playout on uh, a big screen. You can also use this with vMix and things like that as an external monitor. So you might set up vMix to send out a program feed to a TV nearby, and you can use this device to do just that. Before going any further and setting things up, you wanna make sure you download desktop video setup. That's from the Blackmagic support website. You'll be able to get a link on there, download the software, install it, and all your devices will work nicely. Let's take a look at the Ultra Studio Recorder 3G in action. Connecting it to my uh, computer via Thunderbolt, and then I have this HDMI source right here that I'll connect uh, to the HDMI input of the recorder. And then if we head over to the computer, and I just set that down, and open up OBS, I can just uh, head into my sources, choose a Blackmagic device, I'll say that's okay, and then the device I can choose is that Ultra Studio Recorder 3G. So choosing that, and um, I've got a few settings I want to change in there as well. For example, I connected via HDMI, so I'll change it to HDMI, and then it's already popped up there. Uh, I actually have my ATEM Mini connected here, so you can see the multi-view coming out of the ATEM Mini there, but um, whatever camera you connect would be the same idea. It would pop up and be a source within that, um, within that computer. So OBS, it works nicely, and it works very easily with OBS as well. And one more thing to note is that because I have the HDMI audio coming in there, I already have audio coming into OBS. So video and audio coming in at the same time, hopefully in sync as well. So just taking a look at the desktop video setup for the Ultra Studio Recorder 3G, um, I can see in here there's actually not that many options, right? You have SDI and you have HDMI as your input source, and that's all you can really change in here. But if you're having some issues, that would be a good place to jump in and double check that you have that setup just right. I've just connected the monitor 3G to the same laptop and I want to use it with Final Cut 10 to put my playback on a big monitor. Now in my case I only have this small monitor set up here and you can see that nothing is on it right now. It's connected over HDMI but nothing's on it right now. But if I go into the Final Cut Pro preferences into the playback tab I can choose the AV output to be the Blackmagic Ultra Studio monitor. I'll choose that real quick and you can see it pops up on the screen right here, which works really nice. If it doesn't pop up right away, you can always go to Window and AV Output where you're able to turn on and off that output. I'll just turn it back on again, 
and then if I hit play, um, you can see that my uh, my edit is playing back on the Ninja 5 connected over HDMI to that Ultra Studio monitor. Another really good use case for this device and something I would definitely use it for is with vMix. And you can do the same thing, set it up as an output, and then you can send a program feed out to uh, a monitor nearby or a room nearby. So it's a perfect little device over Thunderbolt 3 to send HDMI or SDI um, outside of vMix. Really, really nice. A huge pro of these devices is that they're uh, 3G, monitor 3G and recorder 3G, as it says in the name. Um, that's something that tripped up a lot of people in the previous ones, and I think it confused me before at the very start as well. Um, that a lot of cameras tend to output 1080p 60 or maybe 1080p 50 and it just didn't work with the um, with the recorder device and uh, now that it supports that 1080p 60 and 1080p 50 hopefully there'll be a lot less uh, confusion about inputting odd cameras or all sorts of cameras so that's a huge pro I think on these devices another huge pro is that they are Thunderbolt 3 which really brings them up to date with a lot of computers laptops that have Thunderbolt um, a lot of them now have Thunderbolt 3 ports, so you don't have to do any sort of conversion and uh, you don't have to rely on your older devices. You can get these new ones with Thunderbolt 3 and uh, it'll work for a good time longer until Thunderbolt 4 comes out in the future sometime. As for the cons, um, one device only does one thing, which, is, which can be a con. Then you're going to have to use one of these per camera, for example. Other devices are able to send in a lot of other things, but for the low cost of these devices, it's not really a huge problem. It's just knowing that only one of these ports will work at the same time. So choose between HDMI in or HDMI output. Um, same goes for this one. It's, uh, it's not really a huge limitation, but it's something to remember. This will take up a port on your computer and you'll only be able to do one source at a time with it. Another con is not really Blackmagic's fault. It's the USB-C versus Thunderbolt 3 problem. Um, a lot of people will be confused and think that these devices will work with the computers whenever they don't actually have Thunderbolt 3. What they have is USB-C, so it's just something to be aware of. Again, it's not a huge con, nor is it Blackmagic's fault, but um, it's something to remember when you want to pick up one of these devices. That about does it on both of these devices. If there's anything in particular you want to see about one or the other, then let me know in the comments below. Happy to make more videos before I send them back to Blackmagic. And this is sort of an overview of both, uh, just getting kind of excited about the new Thunderbolt 3 versions. And I use the, the older recorder an awful lot for all sorts of things, so it's nice to see it up to date. The monitor, it's not something I've used a lot in the past, but we do a lot of vMix and outputs to monitors and things like that, so I know it'll come in handy for that kind of stuff. Let me know in the comments if you've got any questions. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.